nine minutes moving up to the seven o'clock hour and you know i'm looking at so many different articles you're getting so much information that's one i would say positive coming out of any major weather event even though there is destruction there is death and that is never a good thing it's never one to to celebrate there is still a chance to learn and so much information now is out there and you get a chance to understand weather patterns understand what's happening with our climate you get to understand in a much more detailed way hurricanes how they're formed and in this particular case i encourage you to get your guardian today page 17 there is an article explaining why hurricanes spare Trinidad and Tobago. And this indeed, uh, I must say, it's a great read. I mean, of course, we kind of understand already, but it goes into more detail. We are so far down south, yeah, the most southern of the Caribbean islands. I mean, after Trinidad and Tobago, we all know it's Venezuela. You could see Venezuela from Icacas. You could see Venezuela from Chagaramas. You could see it from Irene, where I born and grow. So because they're more, these hurricanes, of course, tend to go a bit more center, a little more north, uh, it tends to impact our neighbors, the Grenadas, the St. Lucias, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, in this case here, Barbados, and they are kind of far easter. Of course, Haiti would have received uh, the, the relentless force of hurricanes time after time. A matter of fact, Haiti and Dominican Republic they're both on Tropical Storm Watch. Uh, Jamaica, I go back to what they experienced with Gilbert back in the late 80s. I was very young at the time, but I remember the destruction. It was brutal, very brutal. Uh, the hurricanes that stand out to me in my lifetime, and I guess for those looking on, I'm sure you remember more. I recall Andrew and the destruction of Andrew in 92. Gilbert, which I believe was around 88. And of course, the early 2000s with Ivan. That was the first time I saw personally the impact of a hurricane because myself and Lisa Wickham, uh, we went there, we were part of a media contingent, probably one of the first to leave Trinidad to head across to capture in real time what was happening. And when we got to Point Salines Airport, we got to Point Salines and we came out of that airport there, the Maurice Bishop, we, I mean, tears, you know, the destruction was total total devastation. A hurricane is not a nice thing at all. So it baffles me that men will be, again, by the beach, liming, big fat, almost waiting and anticipating a storm to come like it's some kind of excitement, like it's a kind of joke. No, this is not a joke thing. These, these were the events are very serious. Uh, let's touch base with Colleen Hussein, our weather anchor, to give us the latest. Good morning, Colleen. Morning, good morning. Yeah, Colleen, I was just going into, you know, my, 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 just speaking from my heart about the severity and the seriousness of these weather events, and it's not one to be taken lightly. I know our friends in Jamaica, they have experience in that regard, and I'm sure today they're hunkering down and waiting to see what transpires. Where, where is uh, Beryl right now? So Beryl is about 300 kilometers east, southeast of Kingston, Jamaica, and it is approaching uh, the southern coast of Jamaica as it generally moves west-northwest about 31 kilometers per hour. So um, tropical storm conditions are now uh, likely affecting parts of the south coast of Jamaica with outer bands. Now, the perhaps good news with Beryl is that, you know, it's been affected by strong wind shear overnight and that should have caused it to weaken. However, Beryl has been quite tenacious um, over the Caribbean Sea, and it still has maximum sustained winds of 145 miles per hour, 230 kilometers per hour. And to give you an idea of what devastation that can cause, Beryl moved across the Grenadines, uh, Grenada and the Windward Islands with maximum sustained winds of 150 miles per hour. So just five miles per hour or less. And that is what it's approaching Jamaica with. And it's forecast to move just south of the island. You can see that forecast track on your screen. Um, and then move towards the Cayman Islands later today, um, still as a powerful major hurricane. So major hurricane impacts are expected across Jamaica and the Cayman Islands over the next 24 hours. 
and both of those countries are under hurricane watches at this time. Uh, the National Hurricane Center explicitly forecasting uh, storm surge to be between six to nine feet across Jamaica with rainfall um, in isolated areas up to 12 inches of rain. Um, that storm surge is life-threatening and that rainfall will likely um, cause flash flooding, severe flash flooding as well as landslides and elevated terrain, especially across southern and eastern parts of Jamaica. After the, well, after it, it gets past uh, Cayman, well, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, where do you anticipate, uh, what's the trajectory really of Beryl? Where is it going next? Well, forecast models show that Beryl will continue moving generally west-northwest, um, and that's moving towards Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico where there are tropical storm uh, watches in effect as well as hurricane watches and warnings in effect as well. So um, you have hurricane watches in effect for still parts of Haiti, the Yucatan Peninsula um, on the east coast, and then you have tropical storm warnings in effect for parts of the Dominican Republic still to Haiti. Uh, and then you have tropical storm watches in effect for Belize. So the system is still moving west for now, um, and it should get there by Thursday night into Friday. Um, forecast models and the National Hurricane Center show, or at least forecast, that this wind shear that's been affecting Beryl for the last couple of hours is set to continue, leading to some gradual weakening but it is forecast to remain a powerful hurricane as it moves towards the region, possibly still remaining a hurricane as it nears the Yucatan Peninsula, and that's why there's, there's a hurricane watch in effect. And something else I want to draw your attention to on that um, graphic that uh, you are seeing, towards the bottom right, you're seeing a lot of clouds and uh, bright colors that are moving into the Windward Islands. Mm -hmm. Remember that tropical disturbance we've been tracking for the last couple of days? The Invest 96. So forecast chances for that has decreased. Um, Those showers and thunderstorms are now affecting the Windward Islands, north of Trinidad and Tobago. So we would, well, I guess in terms of today, uh we will get the outer bands. Is, is, is it going to be a rainy day in the couple of seconds that remain? Or what's, what's, what's in store for today? Uh, no, no outer band situation. It is a tropical wave. Uh, we are still seeing some showers move across mainly Tobago, but the strongest winds, heaviest rains moving across the Windward Islands, some strong wind gusts and heavy thunderstorms being recorded across Barbados uh, right at this point in time. Okay. Well, Colleen, I want to thank you as always for the update and we look out for more in the 7 p.m. news. That's Thank you. You're most welcome, Colleen Hussein, our weather anchor, giving us the latest. Let's head across to the 7 a.m. news update, and we come back with your Tobago Talks and so much more. See you after 7.